Rock Island Auction Company's December Premier Firearms Auction is absolutely packed with innovative early firearms. What we've got here in front of me is a few pieces from the Joe Wanamaker collection. A lot of people are gonna be familiar with him. He's the gentleman who ran the Tulsa Gun Show, you know, the biggest gun show on earth. I've had the fortune of being to that show a bunch of times representing Rock Island Auction Company. So all of these guns before me are from his collection and they're just a small taste of what's in his collection. What kind of brings this whole set together, you can tell from a distance, all of these guns are flintlocks, but they are all actually repeating flintlocks of different designs. So we're gonna kind of take a look at how each one of these works so you can get an idea of the variety that's in the auction. And this is just the taste from one collection of the auction. We've got a bunch of firearms from other people's collections as well. A lot of other designs from the Wanamaker collection. This is just a few that I picked out. So the one's probably the strangest and the most interesting out of this whole set is gonna be this one back here. If you look at it, I mean, if you like didn't look at the flintlock, this thing kind of looks like it's a Star Wars gun. You know, I mean, it's got a really fancy looking weird multi-stage barrel with all these different, you know, basically greeble looking designs on it. And it is a very unusual gun. So what this one is, it's actually a superposed flintlock. So this gun, it's not superposed like a Browning superposed, it's superposed in terms of the loads. So this gun actually holds two shots in the barrel at one time. Making this even weirder though, is it's a superposed flintlock that's actually a breech loader. So if you look at this little stud here in the bottom and you pull that back, you can screw this barrel off by hand. That's part of the reason this barrel is designed like that is so you can actually grip it. And if you look down the barrel, you can see it's actually a rifled barrel. So shooting a flintlock back in the day with black powder, rifling made matters more complicated. It would obviously make your shots more accurate, but if the gun got fouled up, it would be harder to shoot. So by having a breech loader, that kind of mitigates that issue a little bit. And if you look, it's actually kind of interesting, the chamber itself is also rifled. So what you would do is you take the barrel off, you would load a powder charge, you'd load a tight fitting ball, most likely a patched round ball, tight on top of that powder charge. Then you would load another powder charge down into this chamber, followed by another ball and seat them all tightly together. Then you would take the barrel, Thread it back on, which goes on pretty quick. You can hear that pin locked in place, so now the barrel can't move without messing with this. You'd prime the pan. You'd actually prime the pan twice. So if I bring the cock back here to half cock, you can see this pan moves. There's an upper pan and a lower pan. The top pan is gonna be for firing the first shot. The bottom pan fires the second shot. So you'd fire the first shot, then you would pull back on this little stud, reveal the second powder charge, close, cock, fire again so you can fire two shots pretty quickly. And aside from the innovative design on this gun, if you just look around on this pistol in general, like I said, the barrel's gonna get a really unique kind of space age looking design to it. But there's also all kinds of little details. You got little masks and faces, you've got animals and floral designs engraved here. You've got some chiseled figure here on the frizzin. It's got a lot of really interesting details on this early repeating flintlock pistol. So this is just one way to do a superposed load in a flintlock. This pistol over here to my right, this one's also a superposed load. This one, it's a little more obvious that it's a two shot gun because you can see it's actually got two complete flintlocks built onto the gun. If you look at the right pan, you can see that there's a hole towards the front of the pan. And you can also see that the lock extends along the barrel here. There's actually a flash channel that runs along the side of the barrel up to about right here. And so you could put some priming powder into that channel to make sure it ignited. But when you fire the first shot, the flash is gonna travel through that hole, up through here, and then ignite the front charge. This one would have been loaded just like the other one with two full charges. Then you would fire the second lock, and that's gonna fire this second shot, which goes straight into the barrel like a normal flintlock. So again, you can get two shots without having two barrels. So if you think most repeating firearms of this era or most multiple shot firearms, if you wanna put it that way, from this era had multiple barrels. By designing it this way, you can get two shots out of a single barrel, which definitely makes it pretty interesting. And this gun, again, has some nice detailing on top of it. It's kind of built like a classic gentleman's pistol of the period. You've got a gentleman's initials inscribed here on the silver escutcheon. You've got some simple engraving here and there. One of the things I found interesting about this one, it doesn't come with a bayonet, but the stock is cut back and then you can see that the front sight is basically a bayonet lug. So with this being turned down to round, whereas the rest of the barrel's octagon, the stock being cut back, 
in that kind of a sight, it's pretty safe to assume that this gun could take a socket bayonet. So if you were using this gun for self-defense, maybe you could use that bayonet, you know, kind of like the, the uh, snap bayonets on blunderbusses as a last resort, or, you know, English gentlemen and other continental European gentlemen and stuff would sometimes hunt with their pistols. And so if you shot an animal and it was wounded, you could possibly use the bayonet to, you know, finish off a piece of wounded game. So this is a second example of a superposed load design. In case, I didn't, I guess I didn't explain this before, in case you don't know what a superposed load is, um, that is kind of what I explained in the first section. It's superposed just means like one on top of the other. So, you know, like a Browning superposed is an over under shotgun. With a superposed load, you've got charges one on top of the other. In, this in both of these cases, you've got two charges. So when I was talking about this one, one of the things I mentioned was most flintlock and early you know, firearms that were multiple shot had multiple barrels. The other two examples here I've got are exactly that. So we've got a pair of pocket pistols, and then we've got a really interesting pistol here that I'm gonna talk about next. So let's talk about the tap action pistols first. So these are both box lock pistols. So what basically that means is instead of having a side lock, all of the mechanisms for this flintlock mechanism are built into the box, you know, what we'd later call a frame or an action of the, of the pistol. And what quickly identifies it as a tap action, you can see it's got two barrels and there's a little lever here that you tap to rotate the pan. So the first gun we showed you, how the pan slid back to reveal a different chamber. On this one, you rotate it. So when it's back like this, you only have access to the top portion. When I rotate it forward, it reveals a second pan that fires the lower barrel. So to load this, you would you know, put a priming charge for each of the barrels in there and get the tap set so that it's ready for the upper shot. And then you would load the barrels. And then to fire, all you'd really have to do is you know, bring the cock back. You can carry it on half cock and there's a little sliding safety mechanism. There's actually a stud that locks this frizzin in place so it can't pop open. That does two things. It's gonna prevent this from just flipping open while it's in your pocket and your powder dumping out, which then your gun's useless. It's also gonna make it to where the gun can't go off. If, even if this was to hit and make sparks, which it's not going to because it's not gonna have the right travel and whatnot, but if it was to somehow smack into that and create a spark, the pan's not gonna open, so it's not gonna set the gun off. So it's actually a pretty ingenious safety mechanism. But you can bring it back to full cock, you're gonna pull the trigger, the frizzin's gonna get smashed by a piece of flint, sparks, they're actually basically just hot metal shards. You're gonna fall in, set off the shot, cock again, rotate your pan, snap, boom, you can fire again. So you can get two shots off with one of these pistols pretty quickly. And then in this case, since we've got two of them, you could have one in each of your pockets. You could actually get four shots off quickly. You know, when we think about modern concealed carry guns, you know, six shots isn't very much. But back in the day, most firearms are single shot. So to be able to get four shots off pretty quickly without reloading is definitely innovative and definitely gives you an edge if you're in a, especially a one-on-one -on -one kind of situation. So these are four shots out of two pistols. Let's look at the last example here on the table. So this one, it's pretty cool. So this is also a tap action. You can see the lever here on the side. This one's actually got four shots in a single pistol. So it's gonna load similarly, but this one's kind of weird. If you look at it, this has only got two positions. So this gun actually fires two barrels at a time. So instead of being four separate shots, what this gun's gonna do is fire two volleys of two shots. So most of the time with a tap action, you're gonna have a design like the previous one where each time you rotate this little lever, you're gonna switch between an individual barrel. So there are multiple barrel examples. There's four barrel examples, for example, that have a lever that goes into four different positions for four shots. This one's actually only got two positions. So what this gun is gonna do is when you fire the first time, it's gonna fire off two shots. And then when you turn it to the other, other's position, it's gonna fire off the other two shots. So you actually get a little volley fire going on with this design. Like the other pair, it still has a box lock action. It's got the sliding safety mechanism that slides forward that would lock this in place. You know, pretty similar. Um, it's pretty common for these box lock pistols. You can see they don't have any mechanism to carry a ramrod. That's because a lot of times you can actually take these barrels off and load them from the breech, kind of like the first example we saw. What you do is you put powder into the antechamber here at the back and then the ball sits on top and then you screw these in. And that makes it you know, both easier to load, it makes them a little less cumbersome to carry. And it actually gives you a little more velocity because you can use an oversized ball compared to the bore. 
so that can give you a little more firepower, which, you know, obviously firing black powder out of a short barrel is not going to give you a lot of power. This is the only one I think I've personally seen that is set up to fire, you know, not individual barrels set up to fire them two barrels at a time. So that's a pretty neat example. So these are just a few of the examples from the Wanamaker collection in our upcoming premiere auction. Just some of my favorites. If you go online and take a look at our catalog, I think you'll see it's a very eclectic collection. He's got a lot of variety and a lot of really interesting pieces, you know, more than I could ever possibly show you all at once. So definitely go online and check out the catalog and see all the details. And on top of checking out the catalog, I definitely encourage you to come out for preview day. If you come out to the preview day before the auction, you'll get an opportunity to handle and inspect all of these firearms and thousands more that are in the upcoming auction. You know, it's like the world's greatest gun show or like, you know, we've compared them to be museums that you can actually handle and touch the items before. I mean, it's an experience in and of itself. And I think if you're a gun collector, you should definitely come out to our preview day and check these pieces out.